What's up, people? This is the Asian Video Gamer, back again with another play session of Dark Souls 2. Today we're going to continue the Ben Hart um, roleplay type of thing. And we're going to do some PvE in the beginning, so I can do some respecting. And the agenda for the day is to dive into the story of Ben Hart. Um, this is the memory of Jay where you can summon Ben Hard to fight the giant king or whatever, the king of giants, whatever you want to call him. Uh, but we're not going to do that because he makes the fight a little bit too hard for me. So instead, oh shit, I got to keep running. The fire is going to come. And yep, I'm going to just come over here. Wait for it to kill everything for me. And then... Whoa, fuck. And then go and kill this guy. Yep. Dodge. Oh shit, missed. You always want to just try to get behind him. Taunt him. Make him use that. Lick stamp. Whenever he does that, run just run through his legs. And yeah, just go there. You should be safe. Yeah, just in case it's... Oh god. That stomp deals a lot of damage and it has high tracking. So... Whenever he does that, just... Roll to the other leg. You should be safe. He's not hard. This guy's actually pretty easy. There. Not very... F oh, shit! Okay, I messed up. Okay, I'm gonna... Just heal for a second. And then... Just... Just so I can uh, make sure I can survive one hit. See, whenever he does that backslash, you can always just circle around his, his mixture. Oh shit, I missed that one. Now I'm in front of him. Make sure you roll towards his... Like that is pivoting. Or just walk up to it or hug it. Make sure you're in the front of him. And when he does that, just roll to the other leg. Oh shit. The biggest problem in this boss fight is there's not enough room. And you have to telegraph like by how the Lord is standing. But... Other than that, he's not that hard. So after this, you get this giant soul lord, whatever. You can grab that if you want, but you don't need it. You can run back and grab stuff that you didn't get before. Be mindful of the fire. The fire bombs are coming really like that. See, you can't avoid it. It's kind of annoying. It's very annoying, actually. But there's two things you have to get. One is um, this, the Bonfire Citic. With this, now you can um, go back, burn this acidic, and then get something that I need the story about behind using Ben Hart there was to um, basically show you one of the storyline elements of Ben Hart because he does encounter the giant Lord but we're gonna see him now in here
So this is the Cardinal Tower or something. Just go up here. Run towards the first pursuer fight, the boss fight area. Just run towards it. Don't worry about these guys. These guys suck. They don't do anything to me. They're just there for I don't know what. Get off. You guys suck. I'm gone. And just run past this place. So go and go ahead and meet Benhard. A lot of people say Well, let's talk about the reason why I'm doing this. The reason why I'm doing this is that I find the Blue Moon Greatsword is actually a very unique item in this Dark Soul game. It's one of the items that tell you, like, it's fake. Let's listen to him. So he knows how the sword thinks, but people have been telling it it's fake. So is he a liar? Is Benhart a loser? Or does he actually know something? But here's the treasure I need to get. Get the hell out before these guys get to me. Oh God, I'm out. Great. Now, the reason why I got the soul vessel is the respect. I've already done the Benhart quest line and gotten all his armor, gotten all his gear. So let's take a look at it. Benhart Night Helm. A helm mid of a no origin belonged to the Benhart of Jungo, Jugo. Apparently Benhart found this while wandering land to land, but its origins are unknown. He wore it all the time he adored, so leaving a slight odor. So kind of disgusting, but I believe this also has the same yep, yeah, has the same description. So Benhart doesn't own this set. It belonged to somebody else, and he just found it. So what are the chances that he found this sword, the Blue Moon Great Sword? The blade of this great sword shines like the brilliant rays of the moon. In the oldest legends, rarely spoken of today, it is said that the sword was born of a great, great white being, Seath the Skellis. Then what? Explains this lifeless weapon. Perhaps there has been some mistake. So the descriptions try and tell you that this sword is fake. Or is it? The shield. Uh, small shield of Benhart of Jungo. This par Parma. Emblazoned. Emblazoned. With the family crest of some sort. Has clearly been around for several generations but has no special value so notice the crescent on the armor now let's take a look at some other armor I believe I have it here do I have it here oh god tell me I have it here tell me I have it here, please. Tell me, please. Don't do not do this to me. I have it, right? Yeah, I do have it. Give me one second, guys. Trying to look for this. I'll probably cut this off. Oh fuck, I don't have it. Shh. 
shit. What? So apparently I don't have that. Kind of a bad mistake on my part. No big deal. No big deal at all. Because I can always buy it off her. So, what do you notice? Clayton, I notice how the item is all put together. Clayton's armor also has the same emblem as Benhart's. So, it might be the fact that Benhard has been to Myra belong to Creighton the Wanderer its design resembles that of a knight order of the eastern land of Mira even though this is fake but the crescent is on there uh, the Lucutiel stuff is different but you know you can tell it's the same so Benhart's been to Mira perhaps he picked up everything from there but he says that the sword is a family heirloom. So possibility of this sword being fake is very high because Ben Hart is a bullshitter. I mean, he's a good fighter and all, but he made it all the way to the throne of wandering. But so did Ben Garo. So did a lot of people. That doesn't explain much. Sorry guys, I need to level up first. Um, so what am I trying to get to? Why am I doing this video? Why why am I talking about Benhard and the Blue Moon Sword? And why am I leveling up? Well, you see, I am trying to link the connection between the Moonlight Greatsword and the Blue Moon Greatsword. Everyone knows in Dark Souls 2 that the Blue Moon Greatsword is a fake. All the NPCs have talked about it. All the pe NPCs have um, denied its existence as being a real sword. And that's fine. That's cool. That's cool. That's that's the way want uh thr from peop from wants people to think, and that's what I believe they were trying to go for. But I think differently from most people. I want to think that. Fr um. I want to think in a way that it's not actually correct to think the sword is fake. In fact, I believe the sword is real. Call me crazy, but I believe the sword is actually real. And why do I think that way? There's three reasons. First reason is the tr um, the way the blue moon the blue moon great sword is. Like if you think about it, from Dark Souls, where did the moonlight great sword come from? The origins of it came from Seath's tail. It was not crafted. It was not created by blacksmith it was existing before it was before even before it was set to be um, it was created before you got a soul before you got a boss soul but this one this blue moon 
this Moonlight Greysword in Dark Souls 2, you get it from trading Ornfix. With Ornfix, you have to trade the soul. And if you talk to her after you rescue her, you'll realize she didn't. She tells you that you need. She needs the soul of a wondrous soul to craft to craft these weapon weapons. It's not like she had this weapon lying in her stock, and she just gave it to you after you traded to her. She had to actually create the sword with the soul. So my th theory is this moonlight gray sword in Dark Souls Two is actually a new sword a new moon light great sword and it's one that was created by Ornfix not the original one where you found it from not the original one where you found it from Seif's tale I know a lot of people will tell you what does it matter? Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much, but it's just something to speculate, right? It's just fun to note. Oh, this guy has a has a have a ring of the life. Oh, he tried to parry me. Nice. Oh shit. Ooh. So, yeah. Good good fight, good fight. So yeah, so the sword might not be fa as fake as you think. So, second reason why people think it's fake. It has no power. It has no abilities. And that is true. This sword does not have any abilities, and it sucks in general unless you put it to raw. But guess what? It's been hundreds and thousands of years. And if the if any of the blacksmith was not there anymore, if they all have gone hollow, how can the Moonlight Greatsword retain its power? How can it retain its ability to shoot out lasers okay this guy's kind of weird whatever oh shit he's doing one of those things huh oh shit Nice. It's too fast. Some some kung fu built. Whatever. It's okay. I could have parried that, but whatever. Next time. So yeah. So back to what I was trying to say. So this lifeless sword. Even though it doesn't have any magical abilities. It could be actually the real thing. The third reason why I think the sword could be the actual thing from back then is the shape of it. Notice how this sword is a lot thinner, a lot longer than the other sword, the real Moonlight Great Sword, the so called real one in, two, in Dark Souls 2. It's not that it doesn't look like it, but this one resembles it a little bit more. Oh, the jump attack, man. Yeah, oh, what the?
What? He got backstabs. That's not fair. Oh, I missed. That was a... Come on. Parry only works if you know it's coming. And it's hard to tell from some of these guys. Oh my god, this hitbox is a thrust attack. Oh my god, that knife. Good fight, good fight. But yeah, the third reason and the final reason that I can bring up is that Ben Hard seems like a decent honorable guy and he keeps his word and the merchants they're not really that trustworthy Madrol and both Madrol and um, Maglon I, I can't mem remember his name they seem to be kind of shady people and they both said the sword is fake and there might be a reason behind it. Magro being a, a dragon remnant covenant, the leader of it, he might have some reason to deny the existence of this sword. Oh, this guy's a whip. Damn. Oh, come on. Yo, how does that miss? Damn it. That was a good game. Whip is so hard to dodge. So as I was saying, the, the vendors are shady and they're telling you it's fake. Ben Hart's kind of honorable. He might be duped into buying it or, you know, believing his heirloom. But chances are, these guys are telling you false information. For what reason? I don't know. They don't ask you for it. They never ask you for the sword. They ne never ask you for anything. Now, my reasoning for them being shady is the fact that Magarol... I was, as I was saying, is Dragon Remnants. And what are they looking for? They're looking for the scales of immortality. They're looking for things to make them like immortal. Roll. Damn it. Ah. Damn it. Your fire deals no damage. You're gonna die. Dead. I'm sorry, but your thing deals no damage. So, yeah. Since they're looking for scales of immortality, chances are anything to do with Seath are interesting to them. And they want you to stay away from Benhart, stay away from the sword. So they can get the chance to examine them. But since you found it, they don't say anything about it. They don't tell you anything else. Or actually, I should say Magaral doesn't say anything else because you already have it. 
And they know unless they can take it off from your hands, it's useless for him. Damn it, I want to swing that one. Oh god. Damn it. Tracking, tracking. Damn it. Pulling out the whip. Damn it. Wow, that dealt a lot of damage. What happened there? Did, did it proc the crit? That was a little high damage for that. Oh wow, good game. Good duel, good duel. So yeah. But the, what about Magla? Why is he kind of shady? Well, first of all, he's how, how can you trust his word for it? He, the guy is like down in the dumps type of guy. He, how does he know his weapons? He doesn't. He just come luckily that you came by and purchased something. And he forgets who you are afterwards. A shady guy like that, anything he says doesn't mean a thing. And plus, it doesn't have any abilities. Wow, the tracking on that. You could have parried that. You gotta get your timing right. You gave me a perfect. But I'll bow to you. Good duel, good duel. So yeah, not trusting what the NPC says and relying on the fact that, you know, this sword is actually real. Because, as you can see, I'm own I'm holding my own in duels with this weapon against some of the best weapons in the game like a flame weapon rapier the dragon curve sword it's not bad this weapon is not bad it's not like a fragile piece of glass it's not like the broken straight sword. From sword actually put in a viable sword in this game. Like you saw me taking care of the giant lord. So this game, this sword might not be. Oh, God, this guy. Wow! I can't even hit him. Yo, what the hell? Die. Yo, what? Come on, do your stuff. Wow, that missed. I don't know if he's lagging or something. Good try. Good, good try. Good try, guys. So this sword just killed somebody with huge magical powers. With a crystal sword. This sword is no pushover. I don't know. I just like to think that there's more to it to this sword and Benhart than it meets the eye. I don't know what you guys feel. I don't you can leave in the comments in the below if you think I'm crazy 
or I'm being like a Ben Hart trying to believe in something that doesn't really exist. Or maybe I am, I caught on to something. This is going to be the last duel. And hopefully you guys are going to enjoy. I'm going to go back and talk commentary style regarding the duel. If there's going to be a duel, sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's long. It's kind of hard to predict what these duels are coming in. But so far, I'm having a lot of fun with this weapon. I don't know. I loved, I love the great sword, um, the move set. When I say great sword, it's like the claymore style move set. I don't really like straight sword as much as I loved it in Dark Souls. Um, probably because they are overpowered in both games. But I like the reach. I like the swing speed of this sword. And I also love the overhead. The overhead really just gets people all the time. A lot of people think that I'm going to shoot lasers from this sword, but I'm not. This is not the Moonlight Great Sword. This is the Blue Moon Great Sword. So it will slash you. And they get caught up with that and try to jump before I actually do it. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, there's no duel. Come on. One more. I might get owned in this one, but it's, it's fine. Maybe I'll get a parry off. But parries are really hard to do for me because, like, I can't do it unless I know this guy's gonna do it. Like, if this guy's gonna give me a pattern, like a roll, stab, roll, or backstab, back, back step attack or anything like that no oh, here's potential this guy's using a great sword oh god I just got cleaved by two wrong move guy holy shit this guy has no life I can kill him one more hit. What the hell? Okay, he's dead. That wasn't even fun. That was kind of anti climate climactic and the R1 spammer with a great sword. Oh well. A win's a win I guess. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Toodles.